It's 7 o'clock, November 8th, 2020. And uh, we'll call the uh, pre-pro meeting to order. And if you stand for the invocation, we can be able to pick the invocation. Father God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for all your many blessings. We thank you for this community and we thank you for all the resources that you've given us. We pray that tonight that you would bless this team of board directors that we would be able to make good decisions for our community and for our members. We pray that you would give us wisdom and knowledge and uh, the ability to negotiate with each other civilly and nicely. And we just pray, thank you, Father, for all these blessings. And just go with us tonight. Please, guys, direct us. Please keep Florida and all of our uh, families and friends safe during the storm. And we ask you, Father, that your will be done in this election. And we'll just give you the praise and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
highest vote count was uh, Ted Wright. Right. So uh, I would like to bring Captain Wright on the board for the last two meetings. Prepared? Yeah. Okay. Come on down. No prizes here, though. <laughs> already changed the online to reflect the 150 and then invoices will be sent out and we'll start collecting that soon. We'll have a few blips with that I'm sure but that's all we can do.
Sorry, uh, any more questions on the uh, uh, Treasury report? If not, uh, call for a motion to the Treasury report. Uh, motion by Sammy. Second. Second by Charlie. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. We'll move on to that. Thank you. We'll move on to um, <coughs> the President's report. Another port of potty for fishing park. 
So um, is that your is that your request, Madam President? Yes, so, it is. So let's let's go ahead and approve mm -hmm. that. And it, as as far as spotting that down there, I, I, I would leave it to you guys working with the maintenance committee to, to do that. I don't see an issue with that. Well, I think if, you know since you got you got some so much stuff you want to do, just put it right. We don't have to get a tractor down there and just put it on the other side of the room. And then if we want to move it, we, we have a problem with that. We can deal with it later. That's so that's my suggestion. So, uh, what's the pleasure of the board? We have a motion to uh, what's, do we have a motion to approve porta potty? I move that we approve putting a porta potty in the kitchen bar. You have a second. Second. Second by Bondrum. Uh, the motion was made by Tommy Matthews. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion on the porta potty at the fishing park? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Uh, I wanted to um, straighten out the amount of proxies that we had since I went here at last meeting. We had a total of 113 proxies. Yeah. 79. Verified. Verified, yeah. 79 registered that day and 34 we already had ahead of time that came in with that speed box for a total of 113 altogether. The 79 was actually members that came that day to the uh, barbecue and members meeting. Okay, those weren't the election uh, proxies? Those no, okay. just for the members okay. meeting. Okay, anything else up here? One more thing. Um, we had our fall festival um, Alex and Ruben had gave us a cutter for hay for our hay ride, but then they asked me later on, would we pay for it, which was around $929 to $200. And so I'm asking the bomber to approve to pay for that. Did they offer it 31st? Yeah. Who is they? Well, Alex and Ruben. Well, we were, we were, I was on my way to the feed store to go buy hay, bales of hay. And um, while I was standing there, he said that Alex offered for us to use it after they were finished with their photo display. I think they had eight or nine bales. And first I said no, and then I'm thinking it would make my life easier. So I said, okay, we'll do that. And he said, we would just drop it off at their house after the hayride, and we could be on our way. But then after, I guess the hayride took off, and Terry came to me and said that, um, I guess Reuben had asked for reimbursement. So... I'm fine with that because we also can use this for our hayride for the Christmas extravaganza. Last year we did not have to pay for hay, um, and I didn't even ask him this year because because of all this. But Tim Flanders last year offered us hay just to borrow, bring it back, put it under his pole barn, and be on their way. So I say, if it's okay with you guys, since we're paying for this, we've got no use for the photo thing. We'll have to use it for the hayride. We use it for the Christmas hayride, and I say we donate it to Tim Flanders since he after, last year after, 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 after we're finished. Mm -hmm. with it. Sure, you'd have to you'd have to dispose of it anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, did you get an invoice or get some verification to the yeah, cost? Yeah, I that? told him I had to have a receipt. He was supposed to drop it off with Hilda, but I don't know what's going on. I guess I could find a way to contact him. So you know, it's really tough when you ask people to drop things off with me because I don't have no more. It started because he wanted to leave the mailbox here, but we don't have a mailbox here. We use a PO box, so I'm thinking, well, Hilda's next door, so that's on me. Yeah, just say, we'll we'll leave just, it on Hilda's yeah. step. So we'll, 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 that's what I mean, the original, and then we'll get you a mailbox. <laughs> so, do we, have a, do we have a motion to approve the purchase of uh, the, the hay for the holiday season? And you said, what, about $100?
future because otherwise you know, they could spend money and then say, well, you know, they're not even board members and uh, we spent for this or that and then want the board to act on the fact to prove it. So I would suggest that maybe in the future that we require uh, either notice or invoices and maybe both uh, in order to approve payment or reimbursement. That's my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Well, we're going we're gonna to get the use out of it because the, the members of these committees have figured that out. This is kind of an anomaly. So mm -hmm. that's what they want. They want to be paid for it. We're paying for it. We'll get the maximum use out of it. And Sammy, that is about the going rate for paying it, around $9, $10. Yeah. Okay. So it's a pleasure, Lord. Make a motion. Make a motion to approve it. Second. second. And we have a second and second. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion passes. I have a quick question. Uh, are you going to order the porta potty? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just wondering who was going to be doing that. No, I just want to thank Bill Brown for uh, donating cakes out of my ice box. Mm -hmm. Here, you have anything else? That's it. All right, thank you. So, uh, Bill, we'll move on to the manager's report. I know you've said you were going to try to make it quick tonight because of uh, a lot of things swirling around in the air. Okay, well, uh, y'all can just read what you have in front of you. I'm done. <laughs> no. Uh, I'm still finding glass and trash and fish in Park Hope. 
with uh, hopefully uh, we can get in there and maybe I'm wanting to put another garbage can in there, but I don't know how in the heck to do it. I'm, I'm having to go down, and when I go in, if I see the garbage can, usually the critters are have eaten the bottom out of it. It's plastic bag is all it is. And so the garbage gets spread out, and I pick it up and put a new garbage thing there, but I don't, I don't know about, um, you know, it's, it's something we need, we need to think about, maybe putting a garbage can down there. Uh, see, I've had several people, I've asked her to leave uh, the boat ramp. They were fishing, they had UTVs, dogs and trucks. And uh, one thing, one suggestion for that is, everybody tells me where's it written on the sign. And the sign is written in a paragraph of the, the rules instead of that kind of list to the order of this, this, like all the other, all the other places. And I think that people, first of all, I can't get them to read the list, so I'm expecting them to read the whole paragraph that has the rules in it, I think is asking, sometimes asking a lot, but maybe that could help people understand the rules a little bit better. Did a person tell you that? Yeah, one person was down there fishing. So and I, I think we it? have those rules in on the website, don't we? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so that that's the display. Maybe. Well, I know that, and uh, <laughs> I'm just telling you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Wait, was that it? Which part? Uh, fishing bar. I mean, uh, boat, boat ramp. ramp. Boat ramp. They were fishing. Okay. Okay, and there's a stump right there in the parking area of. Uh, Ridge part that needs to be ground down. I've marked it with red, I mean, with yellow tape. And one of our members had to pull a person off of it. Apparently, they have a low car. And so the stump stands up about that big. At Bridge Park? At, uh, oh, Bridge Park. I mean, where they park. Okay. Yeah, in the parking. Park. Okay. And I put, I put a couple of screws in and wrapped some yellow tape. How big around is the stump? It's mostly rotten anyway, but it's probably about that big. It stands about that high. Uh, we moved the garbage cans from, you know, everybody kind of knows where Vonda's property is up down at Point Park. Mm -hmm. We used to put our garbage cans right there, but the owners that work live on that street, that side street, they put theirs down there too. And Desi and Barbara are having to pick up these people's garbage because the dogs knock it over all the time. And we keep ours in the can garbage, and I don't think it's fair. So I'm, I moved the can, our can down by the, more closer to our gate, right outside the gate, so that, and then, and then moved the tree pole sign that says garbage, and moved it right there, okay. there too. So, so you might get, uh, I, I told them that, you know, it's not fair to you guys to have to pick up other people's garbage, because they were doing that. And I was too, I'd go pick it up. And, okay. and uh, Brandon Park um, <coughs> is also finding the lock open over there, on occasion. I think people are camping in there. I have not had to run anybody off of this month, but I have before. And uh, they go around the end, which I've talked about before. This on the, I don't know if that's the north end of it? Yes. The far, far end on the, the gate only goes back about 40 feet. I mean, the fence. And then it's just open. You can walk into our park. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's where they go in at if they don't have a key, and then, keep, then they leave it locked in the same situation, they hide it, hide it so it don't look Ultimately, like it. Ultimately, we'll probably have cameras and keep working our way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I, made, I repaired the step at midpoint, so now we, everybody can relax, you know. It wasn't even a messed up or broke or anything, but I put the right side piece of wood in there. Thank you, Bill. And uh, a member uh, marked two trees in Hoder Park that are rotten and, he, and they need to be taken down. And I agree with them. I took a look at them. You know, they're, mm, they're pretty old oak tree, it looks like, but I don't know that much about trees. I'm not. But if it's going to look going to fall, we need to get it out of there. Carmen, I'll get it. I had a, um, he's in an email in. Oh, okay. Area. All right. Okay, and then. Uh, we'll let me just take care of that. Issues uh, brought to my attention is the stump, uh, parking and fishing park. And uh, which we, we, you guys have discussed. And that but what was it that parking, they said? Oh, they said that there's, first of all, there's only two, two spots really available. Now, I don't know. Are, are people allowed to park on the, the easement up along that gentleman's property fence? 
Well, we couldn't park on anybody's uh, property. Um, but right on actually, the road right away extends uh, significantly on the other side. But yet, it's grown up the trees, and the county mm -hmm. hasn't dealt with it. And I don't know that we really want them to. No, I, it, to I think it would be hard. I looked at that, but I'm just wondering where he put the new fence in. Right. But you got to realize that um, the, the telephone pole, um, uh, power pole that's there, you've got a, probably another 20 feet easement. Uh, isn't it about 20 feet on those power lines? 10 feet on each side. 10 on each side, yeah. So you've got 10 feet from that going in. That is a uh, power right of way. Yeah, people could park on that. Well, then uh, there is a, the property just sold, and there is a survey marker now that I'm not sure if that was a survey marker for his property or the power company or right. you, or the road. I'm not sure. I just know that that's a, that's a chance for us to, until we can get that, all this other stuff taken care of. So we can put a sign up here, you know, parking. We should probably talk to the property owner first. Right. And uh, even, even if you had the right to do it, you probably should talk to the property Absolutely. owner first and see. What his thoughts are. Yeah, so they put a beautiful fence up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and yeah, nice job. And they helped us out too greatly on our. Right. Uh, we'll let the maintenance committee handle that. Uh, let's see. Uh, I had a member mention the handrail at Point Park. Uh, so I, I fixed that. There was a little gap where the handrails come together. Uh, and we also need to get some of these holes filled. We're not going to bring in lime because I understand. I'm I understand why. Uh, the issue is uh, if maybe we can backfill some of that stuff, bring some of that back, call it, as you put it, call it back, right. and fill some of it. If we can get somebody with a back back blade or whatever it's called to bring some of that back in and fill, going into Camping Park, it's some big holes. Nobody can even get in there hard. they got to go. I think hold. there's enough material there to move that around to make that work. We just need to contract with somebody to. Yeah. Uh, but a track code or something like that, maybe. Yeah, I, that, that's something you guys, I, I don't do. Well, let's just put that to the thing that's committee and uh, discuss that. Okay. Uh, everybody, thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate that. Any questions of Bill, board members? Okay, we move on to the maintenance committee report. John's not here, but uh, we, from the maintenance committee, Hilda and Tommy have been working on it prioritizing um, uh, projects and also um, some discussion on some specifics on some of the projects. So I'll turn it over to you, Todd, and Bill. Well, I'm just seeing that Camping Park is way down at the bottom of the uh, priorities, so maybe you want to... And it's just not numbered, though. It's oh, it isn't? An addition park? Okay. It's not numbered, it's already. Okay. and 
stone trees. We need to arrest that. So one of the ideas that um, uh, I've shown here would be to come in with Essentially, this is a cross section showing where the Santa Fe is and maybe showing um, a, a deck that filled with uh, shoreline uh, limestone. This would absolutely have to go through DEP and they would have to approve it. But we need, we need something. This is another option that shows arresting it with a retention wall. Um, so, we need to set up. I mean, that would be Swanee River um, Water Management on Santa Fe. Okay. And <clears throat> and we are in discussions with both Swanee River and DEP on projects right now. Okay. Um, okay, so Vicki has a question. Um, while you're talking about that, the erosion at Brennan Park on the Swanee side is even worse than yeah. that, you know, the vision is about to go away. Yeah. Okay, so I think whatever so while you're getting DEP or DPA, it's on, it's in, it's in the we, got, so we need to visit yeah. each yeah. one of those three, if not more parks, and probably the same solution will apply, or similar solutions yes. will apply to yeah. all of them. Um, now, a, a new fence along the residential area back here, which is what Bill was just talking about. Uh, is very good and actually because of the high water that was here um, just recently we see a lot of revegetation occurring in these swales mm -hmm. and that's kind of nice in my opinion. Well if you look at if you stop, the two or three ATVs get down there it'll all be gone. So right but if we keep the <laughs> ATVs out and yeah. we let nature heal itself yeah. it's not bad. I think it's great. Yeah, yeah. okay. And then they, um, they kind of created a wetland. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, just to note that this locked access gate area is really only to be used for emergency and maintenance vehicles because of the steep slope. We're trying to stay away from that and use right. the extreme accesses. They'll have to cut it anyway when they get there, whoever yeah. it is, because some know they don't have a key in the key Yeah. <laughs> okay. We did talk to them one time about. And I but think that that's, that's a small, I mean, the swales, if you don't fill that up, well, we're not going to. Well, I think a lot of them haven't developed vegetation, and okay. those would be our first priority for moving Let further around. Right. But the ones that are revegetating, maybe move them around and see what happens. We might be able to find a way to secure them as time goes on before they get destroyed. Yeah. They're kind of neat looking, there's no doubt. They are. Um, the same thing happens um, at Camping Park. And it, 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 at that, you know, I really foresee a huge deck platform where people could actually swim off of it. Well, that's what that's I've been thinking about too. And that, did you guys walk along the far side where the little trees or whatever they yeah. are? A lot of that can be cleared out and make it into family camping or grilling or whatever, right on the river. That's yeah. what people are wanting, and they'll be able to drive in. Right here. Yes, ma'am. Right here. Okay. Yeah. That that just has so much potential. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I um, learned from my husband David, who just took a uh, continuing education class on a, a ADA, <laughs> is if we were to start identifying these sites by number, which is what we've discussed doing, we've absolutely got to have an ADA accessible site probably near the entrance. So that is, ADA rules really start come, pumping in as soon as we, you know, formalize some of this stuff. Well, well Hilda, look around the room. I think we all kind of be taking care of ourselves, wouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So anyway, um, uh, uh, and then it was discussed. My, my last thing to you, to you uh, Anyway, this pavilion had those built-in uh, tables and seats. Oh, I know. I took another picture, which is much better. Where is it up? Hold on. Um, this, this shifts us to uh, Hoder Park, where currently the situation that we have 
shows a lot of potential space because even with the tables, we can move the tables in and essentially have uh, built-in tables and seating along the edges, leaving um, at the south, is that, no, at the east and the north and the south, there would be two areas that would be totally accessible. But all these other areas could be um, additional seating and eating. So that would be a really easy improvement, hopefully, that we can get. Put a lot more people in, better utilized, I think. Which is, Glenn, I mean, that's not my idea. I just came up with how to show it on the picture. Can we have that yeah. on my Christmas? Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, Tom. Thank you, Governor. As most of you are aware, I, I passed out these forms that um, trying to give us a little uh, direction on what uh, projects that would be best for us to focus on for the coming year. And, uh, and, and hopefully everybody numbered theirs accordingly. And, uh, and then what I'll do is I'll try to, before the next meeting, is to organize it so I can show everybody what we came up with. It's sort of like a boat, mm -hmm. is what we're saying. And, uh, prioritizing, what you're saying. Priority, prioritizing, yeah. The, uh, I've sent them out, has anybody not had one? Do you have one, Sam? I, I had one on when I forgot it. Anybody else need one? I got three well, if you want to go ahead and ask it. Charlie, is there any way that you can post this? Because the whole thing is to get membership involvement, right? We want to get members ideas too. Sure. General members. say that we're working on that so, so something yeah. something if you're always addressing it from an ADA standpoint things change but I've noticed around town in my previous life a lot of people have done that at offices where they just had two spaces and absolutely and uh, so I thought that might work for us if we decide that we really need to do that um, one other thought I had too I've got something on there about Physically, that's good damn tables out there ahead. <laughs> Let me tell you, <laughs> they are. And we need some lighter tables <laughs> and something that'll last a little bit longer. Because your back hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, so, uh, or just, we just need a to thought, get everybody. I know they're expensive. I mean, I was just looking them up in the catalog I had, and you're going to spend $1,000, $1,200 on one table. Mm -hmm. We need to have to make sure younger members. From there to show up to help move them. Yeah. Because <laughs> all of us got bad backs. <laughs> That's a good report, Tom. Yeah. Appreciate that. So, you want the, during this next month for December, you want folks to come back with everything prioritized and yeah, uh, any other 
Anything else that might be missed at any one of these sites uh, that you've addressed that we've already said we want to do some work? And I think everybody's got my email address, so. Uh, I'll take mine back from you when the meeting's over because okay. I could do some of the new work on that. Got a second call. Mm -hmm. Need to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, these, yes, Rick. As, uh, uh, as we go forward with the improvements here for the various parks, um, I, I, I'd like to suggest that we put an AED in, in some of the larger parks. That would be something mm -hmm. that we would do. Oh, they're uh, 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 like oh, yeah. Sometimes you see them in the shopping centers. Run. I, I read your note about that. Uh, Do you have any idea what they run? Uh, well, they're not, uh, they're, the price is about $1,000. Yeah, but it can be worth it because we're out. Maybe put, um, you know, start off with maybe Hodor and Boat Ramp or something like that. It improves and save lives. And mm -hmm. so. yeah. 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 How do you How do you secure that? Um, you see a box, like there's a box you know, where you can like break into the into glass or something like them. that to, to get. Well, that'd be a regular occurrence. In some yeah, cases, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but now you know we have we have locked keys. Yeah, um, the conundrum is that uh, yeah, it, is. it has to be readily accessible. To I understand. Do you know yeah. if there's a good some just like uh, just like Narcan? Is there a good Samaritan rule for ABA? I don't know if anybody can use it if you're covered by the Good Samaritan Law. Well, AEDs, I think, would be covered under, like, Red Cross is doing a class. Well, I know, but that's what I mean. We've got people that aren't going to be doing classes, mm -hmm. so they're going to use them. If it helps, uh, the, the state parks have them there, but like, even the head spring that you're talking about, so they're readily available. Are they throughout the park? Or uh, no, I think just on the, uh, the <clears throat> I, I would suggest then uh, that they be in camera view wherever we put them. That's a good mm -hmm. idea. So mm -hmm. that might be how we want to first approach it. Mm -hmm. Okay, great idea. Okay, any any uh, any more questions of the maintenance committee? And Hilda and Tommy, thank you all for your work and efforts. And be prepared for December to have your reports ready to go back to the committee and board members. All right, we'll move on now to, um, it says SP2, but I meant to say SPZ. A uh, working group on, is going to present. It does it say SPZ? Does it? Uh -huh. Rains for you want to my class? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it says <laughs> oh, Lake, it does. It is easy. It is easy. All right, go give it up. Now. Okay, so, uh, Reese, are you going to. I guess I should your, read the letter. I was, I for your working group? Okay. I got. I, was, I didn't <laughs> volunteer for this. Because yeah, if you I, can explain just a little bit about. Well, there's a group that's working on all the boat traffic that we have on the weekends and holidays. And it's. Uh, they've just, and the group voted and they decided to go for the Springs Protection Zone, which will eliminate all boats. And from what I understand, those of us that already have boats and are here, we will be grandfathered in. So those boats, and most of the time, those aren't the boats you see going up and down the river. And I'll just go ahead and read the letter. Some of you have it, but did you read it? I mean, I, I hate to read it. But anyway, the Ishtani River needs your help to support it from damage caused by motorized vessels, and such as boats and jet skis. Recreational impacts are increasingly damaging our North Florida springs and rivers, and the Ishtani is no exception. While the upper part of the river is protected by the state's parks bans on motorized, motorized vessels, the lower Itchtuckney as it flows through three rivers has no such protection. And a lot of you have been up there and you see how much better it looks than our end. And they have tubers up there, so it ain't the tubers. <laughs> Many weekends, especially holiday weekends, find the lower Itchtuckney experiencing heavy motorized vessel traffic that results in turbid water and ecosystem damage to submerged aquatic vegetation and to the shoreline. In addition, the danger posed by motor, motorized vessels to wildlife such as Florida's iconic manatees is well known. Now, most of the ones you see here have scars all over their backs. Thanks to a new state law, Florida State 327.45, we now have an opportunity to change this situ situation to provide more protections for our beloved Blue River. This law grants authority to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission to establish springs protection zones that restrict the speed or operation of vessels 
or that prohibit anchoring, mooring, beaching, or grounding of vessels to protect or prevent specified harm to first, second, and third magnitude springs and spring groups and their associated spring runs, which we are a spring run. <coughs> In April 2022, a local citizen filed a request to the FWC to establish a non-motorized vessel, SPZ, for the Lower Itch Tutney. The Itch Tutney Alliance is helping with this effort. Establishing a Springs Protection Zone is a new process, and all of us, including the FWC, are learning as this process unfolds. Part of the process involves gaining public support for the SPZ, and that's why they asked me to come. If you agree that the lower itch tutney could benefit from stronger protections, please consider writing a letter saying why you and your organization support establishing a springs protection zone for the lower itch tutney river. You may submit your letter electronically and that has the address and all that there. Blah, blah, blah. I was gonna ask you if you could put this on our website. Attending an up, and this is something else I would recommend that we do, attending an upcoming FWC workshop to get public input on establishing the SPZ. We need large numbers of people who support the Springs Protection Zone to attend. We do not have a date for the workshop yet, but it will be held somewhere in the area where the zone was requested and should be held before November 30th and December 1st, or between November 3rd, I don't know what that means, before the November 30, December 1st. 2022 FWC. Oh, they want to meet before the next FWC meeting. That's what it is. The meeting location to be determined, where we hope to have our request on the agenda. It would also be good if you could attend that FWC meeting. Your support for the Itch Techni is critically important. Thank you for cons your consideration of our request. And Amy Roselle, who is on the committee, requested that maybe you guys take a vote among, your, among the board members. And so you, you can, at, we'll at least know if we have your support. Am I, is that what? Yes. And so if you we, would put it in writing Are we that voting in concept? We don't know what the, what we're actually, we're voting in concept. Of for supporting the spring protection zone, but we don't know what we're doing. But I'm like, whoever suggested that the whole community should vote, not just the board, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. This should be something too, that's put on the website and get, because support anyone from, can then send an email in right. or write a letter. We have a large community that. Right. Yeah. Well, and if I only my printer is going, the ink's going out, so I didn't print a lot of copies. But if you want, Charlie can. Well, this is the one of the better ones. Yeah. That's one of the better yeah. ones. That's the non. That's the better one. Is yours a good one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One of the better yeah. ones. There's a good one. No, this, that's see the difference. This is better. Oh. Oh. Hey, Reese. Well, somebody be letting us know when that FWC meeting is. I hope is. so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And who do you think would be letting us <laughs> know? Well, every yeah, Amy will. As soon as Amy knows, yeah. um, she'll post. We, we get posted on, on the Hoder site. Okay. Essentially, what she has done is she has requested the maximum, which is a ban on votes at the Itch Tutney. Of course, that'll be whittled back, mm -hmm. but. That's what, that's what yeah. they want to start Get what with. what you can. So all we want tonight is to know whether any of you or as many of you as you say support that or don't. And that's going to go on the meeting minutes. Yeah. So you want to take a, a So you're taking a, a vote on no votes? Or are you taking a vote on Starting the SPZ there, zone or what? No, no, it's already a Springs already, Protected Zone. She's no. already requested the Springs Protection Zone as a vote ban for the itch tiny. That was the citizen's request, which is part of what the statute allows. It, it allows the citizen to come up and make a request for the SPZ, and then uh, the process is a little bit hazy, but we have to show evidence of this. Um, the only evidence right now are big, big differences between where boats are not allowed versus where boats are allowed. But that, that all gets complicated. Really, the intent of, of Reese's and my uh, presentation tonight is, please, if you want to do this, read about the sample letters of support, 
Create your own letter of support. Submit it as requested before November 23rd to the Springs Alliance. That would be very helpful. And then let's just take a vote on a simple vote, vote ban. It's very complicated if we give other options. Right. So the, that's what's on the that's what's on the board right now. It's a vote ban. Do we, Anybody? I, I have a Do you have a question, Jesse? I just want to clarify. You mean motorized vessels? We're not talking about kayaks. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Motor, I'm sorry. Motorized, motorized, motorized vessels. Vehicle. Also, if you go on change.org. Um, almost three years ago, a petition was started. There's almost 4,000 signatures on there, and every one of those almost has one of those letters you're talking about, about a bad experience that somebody's had here on the river. I plan on presenting all 35 to 4,000 of those at that meeting, um, but like you said, they haven't told us when they're going to hold this meeting. So you finally found them? Didn't you lose them for a long time? Well, I don't have the ones that the gate breeders had. Those were hand. But you those don't have any. Thousand. Those don't have any letters. Those are just signing the petition, stating the ban. But I, but we do have that you know whole petition where almost every person that voted left some sort of a story, whether it was you know just a comment or an actual lengthy story about a bad experience okay. they had. All right. Well, that's um, so so Hilda, you're saying that that the committee's recommending going for the the, the highest potential. Uh, Level. They are. With expectation that that won't happen, that, that there would be some modification to that. Yes. And so, and without digging into the weeds, it, it just seems to me, from what I, I experience here, it's total reckless abandon with what these boats are doing in the river, but yet they're, every time they do this, they're in violation of the law. So. You can go to a lot of other places. You can go scalloping. And I can tell you right quick, uh, everybody out there in the water will be screaming at you if you come up close to anybody that's a swimmer or someone harvesting uh, uh, scallops. Mm -hmm. So why, why is it different here? Because right, these, these folks feel like because there's nothing out here that says this, all the way up and down our river, there's nothing that says this. And Tommy, you remember what, 25, 30, maybe 70 years ago, we used to have some signs up. I don't know if they were legal or not, but they, they said... A few signs up Yeah, they said no you way. Can't read them. They were They're two so or three old. of them, and they were up. And people were scared to death to, to speed by those. I don't want to get a ticket. And uh, we even had the same thing at the mouth of the river. But it's like um, we can't seem to get anywhere to get there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, 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 don't, I, I feel like there's a lot of rivers where people can take boats safely. And, 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 and maneuver boats, but boats don't get out of the way of the swimmers. Mm -hmm. And when we have some child killed or, or, or someone really get maimed and hurt, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be on us for not making some effort to do mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. and it's really an enforcement issue. You know, we need to petition FWC at these meetings why we're going, is to petition them to enforce it. We already have had that forever. At the confluence of any river like that, you're not allowed to moor a vessel. That's where they all moor. Mm -hmm. You can see a pontoon float. Oh, that's terrible. Hundreds of them. And that's They're where they have. Law. So why, why, is, why, is our river why is our river different? Because FWC allows it. Mm -hmm. It's the only answer. That's true. Well, we don't need them. We don't need to be against them to be against us. Well, let me no. say why no. we thought about taking a diving flag and putting it out there when we were floating. Because the rule around a diving flag is you have to stay so many hundred feet away yeah, 100 from yeah. uh, um, somebody yeah. that's scalloping or diving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what is the difference? If you put a so, diving flag out. All right. So here's, so here's the problem we've got right now. Let me just say this. We, we, we can do this. We can do this all night long. So um, your your request is to just ban boats. Yes. Ban motorized starts. Uh, so is there anybody that's in favor of that would like to take a vote? And I'll count board members as separate from the general membership. And Charlie, you're going to put this out so I we can get... I will never vote on something that the people on the river have access to with boats coming up the river and nobody else does. But I feel like if we set this, 
that we don't need to work a rule that just because we live on the river we get special privilege. We exactly. all need to have no votes if Perfect. we're going to vote this. Perfect, because that's how any and uh, I, I'll, I'll give up my vote that's because fine. I think we're sending a bad well, there's message. There's actually a If we drive our right. votes up the river, nobody else can. I am a voter. I, 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 I think Reese, you mentioned grandfathering because she's aware that some people have oh, votes. I will vote no votes. That's great. That's yeah. great. Totally well, most great. of us that have votes don't even, yeah. you don't so see us going up and down. Yeah. We're not really, there's nothing about exemptions. We can use the vote ramp just like everybody That's else. That's right. Great. Okay. Yeah. So let's take a vote. All those in favor of a motorized vote. Oh, well, that's all right, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> She's hard <laughs> charged up. Yeah, but that's okay. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm in, you're doing great. <laughs> I'm trying to go home. <laughs> well, you're almost there. You're almost there. So do, do we have a, a motion to, um, for the board? Come on, I'll make a motion. I move to adopt Hilda's proposal. No, I second okay. the SPC. 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 So we have a motion in a second to adopt the SPC, which uh, specifically says ban boats from the river. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Uh, any discussion? Sure, discussion. That's really Chairman, I, I just think there's some things we need to consider. I, I think it's very important. And first off, I support all efforts related to safety and the protection of the river, just like you guys do. I think, uh, I think, uh, Laura's right. Uh, there should be no grandfather. Yet that's unfair. Uh, that river, though, is owned by DEP. It's owned by DEP. Now, the other thing that could happen is this. Um, the DEP also has state parks. They, they manage the, the state parks on DEP. Uh, DEP has rulemaking authority, just like FWC. Um, DEP could turn it over to, to the state parks. Uh, the state parks could take control of this river. Uh, those rules then could be enforced by FWC. Um, so there's a lot more that could go on here that I don't think people are quite aware of if, if it's pushed. That means they could regulate not only boats, but they can regulate tubes. tubes. Yeah. They can regulate all activity. So I just want people to understand there's more to this than just throwing us out old band boats. And I'm all for that if that's what y'all want to do. But I just want you to understand this thing could get pushed to the point where we lose control of the river. And we've got a certain amount of control now basically by them leaving us alone. Now I understand the safety part of it and then my recommendation from the very beginning that, that we see, we take baby steps, uh, that we go after uh, the two county commissions to, to pass an ordinance which says a no weight or, or idle speed on. And if the two counties pass it, then we got, we've got something in it. And the FWC can enforce that. So to me, it's more important initially as it relates to safety first. And then we talk about uh, the growth and the, you know, the, the vegetation in the river. But but if, if you're going to pursue it as it relates to safety, then I think that you need to understand that some of these things that you're asking for may come and may come with greater uh, significance than you realize. And so I just want everybody to think about this because I'm all in favor of that. I, I would support saying that this board supports efforts related to the safety and, and it's more about, to me, it's more about the behavior of those people driving the boats. Because there's a lot of people who come up that river in boats that do exactly what they're supposed to do. They, 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 and more, more often than not, they do. And they, they fish and have for years. And I think you're gonna be trying to, to shoot to the moon when you ought to be trying to maybe just get in, in the atmosphere of start. And, and I think that if, if you do this by passing the ordinances, which we haven't even tried, then we could we have enforceability as it relates to idle speed. And if somebody's carelessly driving, then they can be charged. If somebody's recklessly driving, they can be charged. But if you start saying, okay, we're going to ban boats, then who's to say uh, 
tubers have more right than boats. Okay, so, so the answer to that is this is a specific statute that Governor DeSantis came up with last year, and it was approved by the legislature. It specifically addresses boating, not tubers. Mm -hmm. Specifically, but it addresses boating. It's Florida Statute 2745. <coughs> it specifically grants authority already to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation. To enforce it. Uh -huh. to enforce yeah, I, it. I got that. Okay. 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 I, I got all that. But it's, it's dealing with operation of vessels, prohibiting anchoring, mooring, beaching, and grounding of vessels. Has, I, I understand that you want to take it as to be careful what you ask for because we could get somebody that says, okay, well, no tubing. Well, that's not going to happen because they've already seen that tubing hasn't really created that big of a, um, uh, you know, they, they've, they've magnified the tubers <coughs> from midpoint to the takeout by preventing tubers from the north because of the shallowness of that area. And that area has recovered beautifully, but the tubers are not hurting the rest of it. We just did a survey of the vegetation beyond midpoint to the takeout, and there's still anywhere between 60 and 75% coverage with uh, aquatics. Okay, so Mr. Chairman, I, I, I support <coughs> supporting the efforts. Uh, I, I support that related to safety and I support those things related to protection of the river. Um, I, I don't want to get mixed up in a fight over boats that's been coming in here far longer than tubers. And that's what we're going to have on our hands. And I think that if, if we look at this logically, we can do it in such a way maybe to regulate the behavior versus eliminate the boats. Because I think you're going to find that when, once it gets out, and, and I got to tell you, I've been, I would be opposed, just like uh, Laura Hunter, I would be opposed to anything that says, okay, we got to right the boats, a uh, boat on the river, but nobody else does. That would be grossly unfair and wouldn't fly. But that's my feelings on I'm not opposed to it. I'm not even opposed to boats being banned completely. If the boats were responsible, but there's three and four hundred yeah. power boaters. I mean, you, what's the problem oh, with just staying on the Santa Fe and the, and the Swanee? What does it have to be? This is a shallow spring road. Mr. Chairman, if I may. There's, a, there's other boat. things besides peak, uh, speed. Uh, there, there's things that, that can be done as it relates to uh, the boats. Uh, and what could be done, for instance, would be to say, okay, we want to regulate the boats. One on weekends, no boats, and holidays, no boats. So I think you'd have a better shot at that than saying no boats. And I think that's another step. That's another step that maybe should be considered before we jump out and try to ban boats. And also to get the FWC to enforce it because they can never enforce nothing. Right. Maybe yeah. even trolling but, boaters. The, the, the part of the matter is, is that people, people have given up. They don't. They don't believe. There's no signs tell me I, I can't do that. There's no law that says I can't do that. Right. This is my boat. My boat's on this water. You right. can't tell me what to do. Right. And that's yeah. the attitude that, that yeah. folks yeah. have. And very, the very reason I say, Mr. Chairman, that if, if we could get, and I'd be happy to be a part of it, to get the two county commissions. Good luck. We've already Good tried. luck. We've already done that. Y'all already done that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they said no. You got your live oak that Swanee County said no. We went this to This is already a no island. It, this is already a no big island to be. Well, the question is, I don't know what was done there. I don't know if they, what they asked for. I don't know if they asked for idle speed. I don't know what they asked for. They may have thought you want to eliminate the They boats. asked for idle speed, and they said, and the chairman said, we do. I take my boat up there, and most everybody idle speeds. But they don't live on the river, and they don't see them flying up and down and up and down. And the wave runners. Tommy, whenever so I call that to they don't really want to help it out. And I wouldn't give up on that. And I guarantee you, I, Tommy I County is going to the same. It's okay. not that they don't want to help. It's just that they don't have the personnel. Yeah, they don't have they the numbers. Have thousands mm -hmm. of miles of... Well, and let me just say this, though. You know, the, the, they, we hear the story that they don't have the personnel, but they don't post anything. There, there is no, There is no mindset 
uh, with whatever a statute or a regulation. Now, you said the governor put that together, what, a year ago? Mm -hmm. And it seems uh, like he's headed in the right direction to protect and preserve waterways. But if that's the case, if there's something there, then it, it, people, people can see, they can understand. Uh, over two years ago, I submitted a survey of all our signs along the Chutney to the FWC. And they said, you know, our sign shop will get to this at some point. Yeah. Never heard that. Yeah. It's all the signs. There were, there were only like seven or eight signs because, you know, you don't want to over sign on a beautiful waterway. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they couldn't even get that done. <laughs> so this is really a, a very simple um, request just to see whether this will. Okay, so we, we, we um, are we finished for discussion? Okay, so we have a, a motion. Um, Rick, make the motion and Kathy second it, is that correct? Mm -hmm. To go forward with a proposal to ban boats from the spring protection zone. Spring to protection back. zone. Pardon? To back that group. To support, to back the group to support going forward. I, mean, I seriously doubt they'll go that far anyway, but they've been trolling motors would be beneficial if they just put a trolling motor on it and write you want to go up the ditch. Like, like we said, there's no way they're going to get the full yeah, yeah that's a starting point. Yeah. Just, just one last statement, and we'll, we'll vote on it. But what the governor wrote makes very good sense. Yes. And I don't know that the governor said don't have votes, did he? No, he said control. There you go. Yeah. Sure. That's the whole point in regulation. Operation, um, yes. Exactly. Right, there you go. Right, right. Just make it better. So I mean, all we're doing, but, yeah. yeah. Okay. Can we? Still discussion. Still discussion, yes. Can we, I guess, sit down with the FWC board and really? They, we have a lady, a lady officer working with the group. They're, they're in cahoots with the FWC deciding what to do. How often do they meet? Uh, the, uh, so there's a select. Captain Rachel Bryant mm -hmm. is leading the effort for under FWC, for FWC. There are two or three other spring runs that have requested SBCs before ours. The first one got granted immediately. Evidently, it's a privately owned spring that's owned by a legislator. <laughs> oh, <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> so um, it, it'll be really interesting to see where this goes. Let me tell you, <coughs> I, even though I'm in this committee, I'm with most of you knowing that a total ban on motorized vehicles will not happen. But this is what's been requested. It's been accepted. We're in line to be evaluated. So we just need to understand the four levels. Yes, yes. We did take a poll sometime back on this matter. I and mean, Charlie probably may still have it. We did take a poll on whether we felt like both motorized vessels should be allowed in the spring run. You know, I have an issue with, I got a couple pictures of uh, one I'm out about, one of them in particular, somebody boat fishing right up in front of a boat with two of them right, two of them sitting right next That's to them with their boat fishing. That is bad. Mm. There's all kinds and, of And um, as Tommy was saying, I don't, I don't want to take away the fact that people, you know, have a place that they can enjoy the boats and stuff. But um, do you remember back whenever the boats couldn't even make it up here uh, because of the, the when, it's, when it's low like this? You know, I used to remember when we used to swim down there and there'd be so many rocks, there's no way a boat could even come up the river. That's not the case anymore no. for some reason. But well, well, even uh, still, the governor's uh, statement. Uh, or whatever the government decree, <laughs> governor decreed, is that you, even if you had boats and the water was too low and it's damaging, then that would uh, force an issue to say can't traverse the river at certain uh, right. uh, water levels. I know it's so low. I can't. I'm surprised boats get up. They're using flats, but right. Right, but that may be that may be what can come out of this going mm -hmm. forward if if boats are uh, going forward can traverse the river. Well, lately, it's been higher, flooded more than exactly. Yeah. But now it's around nine feet, and then something. Mm -hmm. so in my career, I've seen what boat motors do. Mm -hmm. I have several times. Mm -hmm. you know? 
This has been a very, uh, very, very good discussion. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot, of, lot to consider. However, we have on the table um, the request from uh, working group uh, to go forward. And the main component was to ban votes. So uh, we have a motion and a second. So all in favor of the motion, I take raise your hand if you're in favor of the motion. Can I vote now? It's board members. Yes, for the board. Not to single everybody out, but I guess we don't need to know. Okay, so there's only one that's favored in favor of a uh, motorized vote, vote that, ban? That's not the same thing as what he was saying earlier. What did you what, say? What no, to, just to be uh, a part of the group. So oh, was that your motion? So the motion was to support uh, the SPC. This is a vote ban. Right. And then we're not voting on what we're going to do. Yeah, we're just going to vote up or down. Do that we support criteria? The vote was for a Springs Protection Zone, right? Yes. Right. Yes. Which was stated that that the main main thrust of that was to eliminate votes from the river. Okay. So all in favor of the motion, raise your hand. Okay, so we have one, two, three, all opposed. To support banning votes on the ish totally. Oh, good girl. Okay. Good girl. <laughs> okay, so we so got this. Just four motorized votes. Just four motorized votes. Motorized, 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 motorized,
Whereas uh, Joan Nano has served Trepo with distinction for over 15 years. Whereas Ms. Nano has provided leadership, perspective, and insight into the board meeting legislative processes. Whereas Joan has tendered her resignation after a lengthy record of service. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the officers and members of the board of directors offer sincere thanks and appreciation for all of her contributions and wish her the best uh, into the future. Okay, great. That's, that's great. So we'll, we'll make that into a form of a motion to approve that resolution. Okay, um, uh, I move that that uh, re re resolution be adopted with applause. Okay, and uh, I we have a second. So uh, Kathy seconds. Any discussion on that? So that will be read in a minute. So all in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. <laughs> No more leave. Oh, go ahead. Kim. What I would say, uh, we would like to honor Terry, but you don't feel good, do you? No, I'm trying to get out of here. You're trying to get out of here. You want to take Okay, so what we're going to do is yeah. we're going to have a cake yeah. and we're going to have a happy birthday. Oh. So let's have a happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. business, I'm sure, and there's no one wants to speak at the board. Is that right, Jesse? <laughs> okay. All right. So I have a, do we have a motion to adjourn? A motion to adjourn, second. We have a second by Kathy. All in favor say aye. 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 Would you, Mike Davis, did you enjoy yourself? I'm sorry. Did you enjoy yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I never had a lot of Mr. Alternate. Oh, yeah, I got you.